Five Times Tony Denied Having a Kid by Katie the Book Nerd. Chapter 6. The one time he went with it. The Doctors. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Tony groggily awoke from an impromptu nap, draped uncomfortably over the metal table in his lab. It had been a late night, and he must have dozed off while he was waiting for the soup diagnostics. Bzz, bzz, bzz. He had tiredly fumbled for his phone that was vibrating on the table next to him, almost knocking it onto the floor. He composed himself a little more, and fake cheerfully answered, Tony Stark, eh? Mr Stark, the lady on the other end acknowledged him, there has been a car accident involving May and Peter Parker, and they are both currently at NYC Health in Queens. And as you are the emergency contact for Mr Parker, we would like you to come down as soon as possible. She didn't need to tell him twice. Before he had even processed what was happening, he was knocking over the chair in a rush to get to his feet. He clumsily ran up the stairs, grabbed his coat, wallet and keys, and was in the car in record speed. He didn't even care that he was in the same t-shirt and jeans as yesterday, that his hair was sticking up all over the place, or anything else that was usually a conscious consideration before making a public errand. I'm on my way, thank you, he told her, finally remembering that he was still on the line. He did his best, but he couldn't mask the utter panic he was feeling. I can meet with you on the fourth floor nurse's station to discuss the circumstances, as both Parkers are in surgery. She hung up, leaving him to his thoughts. There are so many things that could go wrong. Too many things. The doctors could figure out Peter's identity because of his rapid rate of healing. They could both die. Peter could die. May could die. And Peter would not have another single living relative. Peter could die. If you had told him a year ago that he would be in this situation, scared completely out of his mind, he wouldn't have believed you. But after getting to know the spider kid, he really has a way of webbing his way into your heart. He started to actually panic having his first anxiety attack in months, before he managed to talk himself into slow breaths. In. Out. In. Out. He needed to think about this logically, considering the various complications of the situation. First priority of business, other than actually getting to the hospital. He was coming from the tower, which was close, but still 14 minutes away and that was too far for his liking, was to deal with the identity. He could call for Helen Cho and make her the lead doctor on his case. That could work. She could bring her team, and that they had already signed a non-disclosure agreement and worked with the Avengers. That would solve his first problem. By the time he finished talking to Dr Cho, he had arrived. He practically sprinted up the stairs and to the area where the woman said to meet. A tall blonde lady was standing there, looking very professional and put together, polar opposite to Tony's frantic shit show. Hello, Mr. Stark. My name is Lauren Vance. I am the caseworker assigned by the hospital for both Parkers. Here is what is going on. The two were driving through the intersection of 22nd and 43rd when they got into a broadside crash, also known as a T-bone accident, and their car was flipped. May Parker is currently in surgery due to a large tear in her abdomen caused by a broken car door, while Peter Parker just got out of surgery setting his fibula and collarbone. We got a faxed request from your personal doctor, who insists on taking over the Parker's care, so if you could just sign here, we can switch the staff. Now there is a matter of... Tony was impatient, so he interjected, Can I see him? Excuse me? The woman looked a little taken aback by his sudden outburst. Can I see Peter? He repeated again, calmer. Well, he is currently in the ICU, which only allows immediate family. Are you directly related to him? You have to wait here until he is out of the ICU, unless you are his father or... Yes, he is my kid, for God's sake, let me see him! The lady was seeming to be a little weary of his explosive actions but she must be used to this sort of thing happening in her line of work. Besides, Tony didn't care if he had to call the suit to him and fight everyone on the staff. He was getting in that room. She led him to Peter's room, 
and the kid looked terrible. He had tubes coming out of his nose and mouth, with multiple needles inserted into his arm. He knew Peter must definitely be out of it, otherwise he would have thrown quite the fit. Despite the many injuries he received while being Spider-Man, he still hadn't gotten over his fear of needles. And beyond that, so many bruises littered his body that there was barely any of his pale skin showed through. Blood still caked his hair. Oh, Pete, he whispered before sliding into a seat by his bed, scooting in next to him. He sat there for a few minutes, his head leaning on the palms of his hands, his elbows resting on his knees. It was silent before I finally spoke to Miss Vance. Okay, give it to me. All the information you need me to do. Everything I need to sign. All right. She talked to him for an hour about all of the logistics and outcomes. Peter was going back into surgery for his brain about two hours from the time she finished talking to give his brain time for the swelling to go down. After that, it was only a waiting game to see if Peter would wake up. Then they could assess the full extent of his injuries. Until then, Tony sat diligently by his side. The crisp white walls made the room feel cold and lifeless. And the stiff chair was already making his back hurt. Even in just the half an hour he had been there. Other than that, it was empty. A pitcher of water on a simple desk. A single small television hung from the corner. The blankness of the room paired with the stillness of the kid, unnerved Tony. This was the complete opposite of everything he knew and loved about the kid. When they came and got Peter to go back to surgery, he decided he couldn't take sitting in the practically empty waiting room by himself for hours. He picked up the phone. Pub, he called, his voice coming out in a hoarse whisper. I need you. She arrived an hour later. They sat in the waiting room until Peter was stable enough for him to be in there. Tony sat right next to him, like last time. Pepper having to stay in the waiting room, as she wasn't family. It was a while before Peter finally opened his eyes. But to Tony, it was worth every second of the wait. Hey, good. He spoke softly. How do you feel? He took a deep breath before replying. Like shit his voice quiet and raspy. Hey, language. He smirked and Peter smiled back. How did they let you in here? He asked Tony, slightly confused. Tony gave him a mischievous grin and leaned in close. If anyone asks, you're my good. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, I really hope that may survive that. A rip across the abdomen? Not fun. But the fact that Tony would lie about being his father, yeah, why can't I see that happening so clearly? Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.